Last night, the majority on the Intelligence Committee made the decision to uh, prematurely shut down the Russia investigation, the only authorized investigation in the House of Representatives uh, into what the Russians did in the last election, what the U.S. government response was, uh, and the issue of any coordination or collusion with the Trump campaign. That was a terrible disservice to the country and the American people uh, and represented a reneging on the commitment that was made at the outset of the investigation to follow the facts wherever they lead. Uh, instead, uh, what the majority on the Intelligence Committee did was go through the motions of an investigation, call in witnesses but allow them to refuse to answer questions, allow them to invoke non-existent privileges, or simply decline to answer because the witness didn't deem the question relevant or because they would rather not say. Documents that were necessary to obtain to determine whether witnesses were telling the truth uh, would not be subpoenaed. Um, this is no way to run an investigation. It is only a way to go through the motions to give the pretense of trying to find the truth. We are going to do our best uh, to continue our work. Uh, there are individuals uh, who want to cooperate with our committee uh, and share information and will continue to do so. Uh, we will be putting together a report that will set out uh, for the country what evidence we have seen to date, uh, what evidence we have seen in terms of the Russian hacking and dumping operation, what evidence we have seen in terms of the Russian social media campaign, their paid media campaign, uh, and yes, the issue of collusion with the Trump campaign. There is significant evidence, much of it in the public domain, on the issue of collusion. Uh, the secret meetings with George Papadopoulos, the secret meeting at Trump Tower with the President's son and son-in-law and uh, campaign chairman, the lies and dissembling about that meeting, the promises by Russia that were communicated to the highest levels of the campaign uh, in the preview, in the run-up to that meeting, that this was part of the Russian government's effort to help Donald Trump by providing derogatory information on Hillary Clinton, uh, and of course, the secret conversations that then acting National Security Advisor or incoming National Security Advisor Mike Flynn had with the Russian ambassador to undermine the bipartisan policy of the United States, conversations that he lied about, that other transition officials were evidently aware of, uh, that the vice president misrepresented uh, unknowingly uh, to the country. Um, all of that bears on the issue of collusion. Um, there are other facts outside of the public domain. Uh, and of course, one of the most important parts of the investigation is putting the pieces together. Um, but still, there is work to be done on that issue and on others, work we have not been allowed to do. Uh, our committee, for example, has not even interviewed George Papadopoulos. Uh, but there are witnesses that were involved uh, or knowledgeable about the Trump Tower meeting who have not been brought before our committee. Uh, there are text messages we have not sought to subpoena. Um, we are releasing uh, this evening a 22-page status report on the investigation that sets out some of the key witnesses that the majority has been unwilling to bring in, the key documents they've been unwilling to ask for, the witnesses who have come before our committee and stonewalled on key questions so that the public can see just how incomplete this effort was. Uh, sadly, from a very early point in the investigation, uh, the chairman made the decision that his mission was not to find out what Russia did, not to determine the role of U.S. persons, but rather to endeavor to distract the public, to put the government on trial. Um, that problem persisted throughout uh, our investigation uh, and has led to its premature conclusion last night. Uh, but the work is too important to leave undone. Uh, in particular, the American people need to know whether the Russians still have something they can hold over the president's head, the president of the United States. Uh, so our work is far from done, um, and we will be submitting to the public uh, a detailed account of what we have learned to date uh, and the work that has to be done, if not by us, then by others, uh, so that the country can be sure that its administration is acting in the best interest of the country and not because of leverage the Russians may have over the President of the United States. Uh, and I would invite my colleagues to, uh, to share their thoughts as well. Yeah. Please. Um, the ranking member has uh, well uh, uh, elucidated the damage that will be done to the truth with respect to the Russian interference and possible U.S. person collusion. Uh, sadly, uh, unless we're successful in continuing this investigation, 
it will be difficult for the country to ever know exactly what happened and therefore to respond with one voice. I want to highlight just very briefly, however, some lasting damage that the premature ending of this uh, investigation will do to Congress and to the separation of powers. Uh, as many of you know, because the ranking member has detailed uh, these issues over the course of the investigation, any number of witnesses have asserted historically broad and unprecedented uh, exemptions for testifying to the United States Congress. We saw in the case of several witnesses an expansive and historically unprecedented claim of executive privilege. The idea being that not only did they, uh, were they protected from discussing any conversations they had while they were in the White House, including with third parties that weren't the President, they claimed that transition periods somehow fell under executive privilege. So any conversation with anybody during the transition period were conversations that were not made available uh, to this committee, including by two of the people who are closest to the President of the United States, Hope, Hope Hicks and Steve Bannon. Our final witness, of course, asserted what I've come to call the I don't feel like answering it uh, exemption uh, when his attorney uh, decided that he, as the witness's attorney, would determine what was relevant and what was not relevant to our investigation. And so I highlight these facts because this is not a partisan issue. The power of the United States Congress in the future to undertake investigations will be forever compromised by the decision of the majority not to push back on these unprecedented uh, claims of privilege against testifying to the United States Congress. I would offer to my friends in the majority that someday, probably not too far from now, they may seek testimony from a Democratic president or a Democratic administration. They have now handed a historically unprecedented exemption, uh, claim of privilege, to anybody that they seek to investigate in the future. Uh, and that is something that not only damages the United States Congress, but actually erodes the important separation of powers uh, in the United States. I think the ranking member did an excellent job of uh, providing you with the backdrop. Let me just suggest a few things. First of all, um, this is a gross dereliction of duty by the Republican majority to prematurely put out this report. Uh, the chair, Mr. Conaway, on Fox News last night referred to it as a wound. And it struck me that that's how um, the president and the Republicans see this, a wound that they do not want to have to continue to fester, so let's just put a Band-Aid on it and shut it down. Uh, this has never been, in my view, an independent investigation. And I think this report, once it becomes public, will suggest to the American people that this is a uh, playbook from the president that has been uh, recalibrated to be a report from the Intelligence Committee. This report was cooked before it was ever baked. And it is a, a truly uh, desperate attempt, I think, by the majority to undermine what is a very important function. Two other areas that they spend very little time on. The fact that the intelligence community knew in 2015 of the Internet Research Agency. We have not spent a minute talking to the intelligence communities, doing our oversight in terms of why they did not act more deliberatively in dealing with that issue and bring it to our attention uh, sooner. And secondly, the election equipment throughout this country, I think, is in shambles. Uh, we have a responsibility to investigate it, to determine to what extent hacking is feasible, and to make sure we have a system that is, is truly independent and not subject to any kind of malfeasance. I also thank the ranking member uh, for his work and leadership uh, of the committee. Uh, but this incomplete, inaccurate report only invites hackings, not just from Russia, but we've learned through this investigation and open hearings that there are other countries and other non-state actors who have similar capabilities, who've been on the sidelines, who may now see our weakness as an opportunity to interfere in the upcoming elections. Our committee members, I know, is part of our responsibility going forward. We'll look at what we have learned under the limited opportunities we've had to interview witnesses to make sure that we can do all we can to put reforms in place so that when Americans go to the polls, again, throughout the primary season in this November, that we will have at least recommended from a minority standpoint reforms that can better harden and protect the ballot box from future Russian interference and, God forbid, uh, interference from other countries that is now invited, given a green light uh, by this 
your responsible report. Let me just detail that for a moment. Our election equipment is on the average 10 to 12 years old. The last time the federal government sought to purchase election equipment for the states was after Gore Bush. We spent $3.5 billion to do that. Our equipment is so old it cannot handle modern anti-cyber hacking software like your computer that's 10 to 12 years old can't. So we spent the last year watching the president obstruct this investigation with key allies on the Republican side of this committee. We are now in election season and we are not ready. I'm on that subcommittee that would purchase this equipment. Currently through negotiations, we're about $380 million, which is what we're going to try to do more, but frankly right now it is a joke. So there are real world impacts right now. One of the most important tenets of this investigation was to make sure the Russians didn't do it again. We did just the opposite. Yesterday was a very sad day uh, for the House Intelligence Committee. I've been on the committee for four years, and we cannot underestimate the fact that before this investigation started, uh, the House Committee was a committee that was truly nonpartisan. You would want our national security to not be partisan. But we reached a new low yesterday when the House Republicans abruptly and unilaterally decided to end this investigation. And we still have so much uncovered, undiscovered um, uh, evidence that we must continue to work on. The American people deserve to know that we are getting to the bottom of what happened in this past election, and most importantly, how we plan on protecting them from, happening, from this happening again. And so I just am really disheartened, um, actually really sad, that this committee has reached such a low. Um, and I just ask my friends on the other side, uh, my friends in the majority, to really think about how they've done irreparable damage to the confidence and reputation and integrity of the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. The premature closing of this investigation is a betrayal of the American people and a betrayal of the public trust. There were leads and investigative paths on, from my perspective, three different and major significant areas. First, on collusion. Second, on money laundering. And third, on obstruction of justice. So much information that we received from witnesses, leads that should have been followed. At this point, the majority has chosen to ignore those. We will continue to work as hard as we can within our limitations, being the minority in this committee, to get to the bottom of who interfered with our elections, why they did it, and which Americans helped them. But we also hope that the Senate investigation will go further, will get out more to the American people, and that, of course, Special Counsel Mueller will do his job. I thank my colleagues for the comments. Uh, just want to make uh, two final observations and then go to your questions. The first is uh, <coughs> to underscore uh, what Jim Himes said. When Steve Bannon came before our committee, initially he refused to answer any question about what took place during the transition, during his time in the administration, uh, and most questions even after he left the administration. He made no claim of privilege. He merely said he was operating under the instructions of the White House, a White House that was saying publicly that it was fully cooperating and fully transparent uh, with our committee. The committee immediately took issue with that. Uh, the majority subpoenaed him on the spot uh, and was indignant that a witness should refuse to answer questions so broadly. When he came back in, now under compulsion, uh, he came back with a list of 25 questions that had helpfully been drafted by the White House, uh, all of which would be answered with the word no. Any further questions would be refused by the witness. Again, the majority said that's absolutely unacceptable. That will impede our investigation. That will impede all future investigations. We're going to have to move forward with contempt if that's the last word. We've heard nothing since. The majority has decided they would rather shut down the, infer the investigation than find out the answers to the questions we had for Steve Bannon. Why did he think what happened in Trump Tower was treason? 
what conversations did he have with the president about the meeting at Trump Tower or the issue of money laundering? This majority doesn't want to know the answers. Uh, and it has set a precedent now that will affect future Congress's ability to get answers from the executive. We have had a chance uh, to do a cursory review of the majority's draft report. Uh, and sadly, it is little more than another Nunes memo in long form. It cherry picks some intelligence facts uh, and ignores a whole host of others. Uh, it misleadingly characterizes events uh, and paints a portrait and tells a story that could not have been better written if it was written in the White House itself. Uh, it is not a serious work, uh, but then it wasn't designed to be. And uh, that is, uh, I think, uh, deeply re regrettable uh, and a betrayal of the responsibility that the committee has to the American people. Uh, when they publish that report, the public will see just how uh, terribly inadequate uh, it is. Um, so we will be forced uh, to write a minority report uh, and set out uh, the facts. Um, and the country will be in the unenviable position of having to choose between a Democratic report and a Republican report. That is a, an outcome that we sought from the very beginning to avoid, uh, something I talked about indeed in the first opening hearing we had in this investigation. Uh, but there was a decision made very early by the majority that their object was different, and we were put in the position of either go along with an investigation in name only uh, or to part company, and it is uh, regrettable that we've had to do so, and I'm happy to go to your questions. Sir, will your, will your uh, report include some of these uh, facts that you say are not available publicly yet in terms of uh, collusion and obstruction? And secondly, will you also include some of the transcripts from your interviews uh, in this report, which the minority, sorry, the majority has, has it's not clear if those are the reasons part there. Uh, yes, we'll be setting out the facts that we know to date uh, to the degree, again, that the intelligence community will allow us to make those public. Um, and most importantly, we'll be putting those facts in context uh, and uh, indicating how some facts shed light on other facts in the investigation. We will also be pointing out, however, how incomplete the report is, uh, how key testimony that sheds light on those facts the majority was unwilling to obtain. Um, and so it will be an incomplete report uh, of necessity. Uh, we intend to append to our report the complete transcripts uh, of all the witnesses. Um, the majority has said they support making the transcripts public. Um, we will put them to the test of whether they really do. Uh, you will see in those transcripts that often what the majority called investigation was merely asking a witness, did you conspire with the Russians? Did you coordinate with the Russians? Did you collude with the Russians? And when the answer was no, they were content that that was the end of the story. Uh, that is no way to conduct an investigation. Uh, it's the equivalent of having a getaway driver on the stand and asking, did you rob the bank, uh, and having the witness say no, uh, and failing to ask whether they drove to the bank, whether there was someone else in the car, whether they kept the engine running at the bank, whether someone ran into the bank and came out with a big bag, whether the tires screeched as they left the bank. Those are the kind of questions you have to ask, and more than that, you have to get records about where people were and when they were there and what calls they made and what bank accounts they used. Uh, and the majority was unwilling to do any of that hard work of investigation. Mr. Schiff, you said you want to continue the investigation as you can right now, but obviously there are significant limits on what you can do. I'm wondering if you take back the House this fall, do you plan to restart this, this investigation next Congress? If uh, the majority in the Congress uh, changes hands, we'll have to evaluate where is the investigation at that point. Uh, what has the Senate been allowed to do? What has the special counsel been allowed to do? Uh, and determine if there is work that is still undone. Uh, one of the key issues I'm concerned about that we were not able to pursue, and I don't think the Senate has been able to pursue, is the issue of money laundering. Uh, we know that the Russians use financial entanglement as a way, as part of their active measures playbook. Uh, we know that the Trump Organization often had a hard time seeking financing from reputable lenders. We know one of the lenders that they did use was Deutsche Bank uh, at a time when other banks weren't willing to lend to them. Uh, we know that Deutsche Bank had to pay hundreds of millions in fines for laundering billions of dollars of Russian money. Uh, we know that the President's sons have talked about getting money from Russia. 
Uh, and we know that uh, through other witnesses that there are indicia of money laundering in the Trump properties, uh, as well as uh, an indictment uh, that showed that there was a organized crime and money, money laundering ring, in fact, operating out of Trump Tower at one time. Um, these are credible enough allegations they need to be investigated. I hope that the special counsel has been given the latitude to investigate them. They certainly arise from the Russian investigation. But most significantly, if evidence of money laundering is leverage the Russians have over the President of the United States, we need to know it. Could you talk a little bit about the process of your report? Uh, have you started writing it? What do you think its timeline is? And are you going to have the committee vote on it, or would you just release it completely separate? From uh, we have been working all along to assimilate the facts uh, in uh, a, a, a form that can be incorporated into a report. It had been our hope for some time that even if there were areas of disagreement with the majority, that we could at least come together on a report that validated the findings of the intelligence community, that the Russians had intervened, that they had three motivations to sow discord, to help Donald Trump and hurt Hillary Clinton. But last night uh, in its statement and today as we got a chance to read uh, their draft, it's clear that the majority uh, wishes to contest even the fact that the Russians were trying to help one candidate and hurt the other. That is the consensus of the intelligence agency and based on solid evidence. Uh, it is abundantly clear from their social media campaign, from their hacking and dumping operation, from the indictment of Bob Mueller. Uh, if this is where the GOP is coming from, it represents to me the completeness of their capitulation to the White House. Uh, and that leaves very little common ground. Uh, so we have been working to assimilate the facts into a report in the hope that we would have a joint report, um, as that looks increasingly unlikely uh, to any substantial degree, uh, it, it will form the basis of a minority report. Now, um, it will take us time to finish that work, um, and it will take time for the ICD to classify it, particularly because we will be appending the witness's testimony. Um, but we want to present the, the public with as complete a factual record as we can. So the majority said yesterday with apparent confidence that they have found no evidence of collusion, conspiracy, or coordination. As you stand here today, and based on the facts that you're aware of, the public may not be aware of, can you say with confidence that there was collusion and coordination? I can certainly say with confidence that there is significant evidence of collusion uh, between the campaign and Russia. Um, what I cannot say, because I don't know what Bob Mueller knows, uh, is whether that evidence rises to the level of proof beyond a reasonable doubt of conspiracy to violate U.S. election laws. Uh, but you would have to credit every self-serving explanation for every specific piece of evidence to say that it doesn't provide evidence of collusion. Um, you would have to defy common sense. Uh, part of, I think, the challenge that we have as a country is that we are so balkanized right now that we view the same facts in different ways. Um, I have no doubt that had Susan Rice been having secret conversations with the Russians to undermine U.S. policy and been caught and lied about it, uh, the Republicans would be the first to scream collusion. Uh, and they would be right. But of course, that didn't happen with Susan Rice. It happened with Mike Flynn. Uh, but the conclusion should be, still be the same. That is a form of collusion. When the Russians offer help, derogatory information about Hillary Clinton, and they describe it as part of their government's effort to help Trump, uh, that is evidence of collusion, very specific and very direct and indeed in black and white evidence of collusion. Um, but again, there are missing pieces. George Papadopoulos was told in April of 2016, even before the Clinton campaign, knew that the Russians had stolen Clinton emails and previewed their dissemination. Who did Papadopoulos share that information with? Um, was that part of the reason why the president's son and son-in-law and campaign manager were disappointed in what the Russians produced in the Trump Tower meeting? Because the campaign had been informed that they had far better derogatory information about Hillary Clinton. Um, we're prevented from finding out. Uh, but uh, I can only hope uh, that Bob Mueller operates under no such restriction uh, and that over time, if not at the present, we will get the answers. Mr. Last Schiff, question. Say, Mr. Schiff, can you say any more about the types of uh, witnesses or, or people who might want to continue to uh, work with you as part of your investigation? And also, what is the role for Democrats in some of the aspects of the Russian investigation that the majority is still continuing on with 
uh, related to unmasking. There's another one involving the State Department as it relates to the dossier as well. Well, this is the great irony, of course. The majority has said we spent too much time investigating Russia, and we're going to shut it down. It's just not that important. But we're going to continue investigating the U.S. government. That really tells you all you need to know. The priority for the majority has not been finding out what Russia did, has not been finding out what the Trump campaign did, but has been to carry wa the water for the administration by putting the government on trial. Uh, and that effort to distract uh, and to undermine the work of Bob Mueller, the majority has signaled they have every intention of continuing. We, of course, will continue to resist that uh, and to point out what a um, transparent effort it is to detract from the Mueller probe. Uh, in terms of the other work that we're doing, certain aspects of it uh, will be impossible because uh, records that we should get, for example, from Twitter, direct messages with Trump campaign associates, we know that we're in contact with Guccifer II and WikiLeaks. They will not provide without a subpoena. But other witnesses have come forward and offered information, and others will continue to come forward. Uh, and we will continue to learn more through good work of people like yourself doing investigative journalism uh, and the work of Bob Mueller that will inform what we already know uh, and will be part of the basis of our report. Um, so we'll continue uh, in every way that we can uh, until this committee decides uh, on a, a full committee basis to once again undertake its responsibilities to the American people. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Tradecraft in the ICA. Connolly said that there was room for agreement. Thank you.